offered right now. So all businesses and non-for-profits in New York State are now eligible to apply for something called a federal low interest disaster relief loan. If you feel like you have suffered a significant economic injury due to the, the pandemic, um, I will send information about that. Grants. Um, the United Way of Westchester um, and Putnam announced that in response to any of the hardships that have been created as a result of this pandemic, um, it will be releasing funds totaling up to $50,000 through grants to nonprofits in Westchester. I know $50,000 sounds like a small amount of money for the large amount of businesses in Westchester, so don't think I don't recognize that. Um, commercial eviction more um, on Friday, March 20th, Friday that just passed, um, the governor announced that New York will implement something called a 90-day moratorium on evictions um, for residential as well as commercial tenants statewide. Um, the 90-day freeze on commercial properties, um, this, is the this is a really important part to, to just keep um, on the top of your minds. It will be tacked on to the borrower's mortgage um, at the end, right? So what we're fighting for in the legislature is simply a cancellation of the 90 days to basically say that we are asking um, to cancel those 90 days to provide relief in the budget that's coming up soon so that we actually are not um, adding on a burden at the end of this crisis um, and then having to um, make you pay that at the end. Um, debt suspension, that's another thing that we are dealing with. Um, small businesses who owe um, any other types of debt to the state of New York um, and have been, they've all been referred to the Attorney General's Office for collection and litigation. It's suspended. Um, you don't have to worry about that. I'm not sure if anyone on this call has that um, as a consideration, but now you know. Um, the Business Council of Westchester has put together an, an amazing compilation of resources. I will also share that with you. Um, and then additionally, my office has been tracking all of the District 34 businesses um, because what we really want to do is make sure that um, we are aggregating all, all of the businesses that are, are feeling the hardest hit. Now, just to, to kind of segue into opening it up for everyone, because I just did eight minutes here. What my goal is, is to create some type of a plan to do two different things. Number one, to make sure that Pelham residents are actually eating um, and, and or shopping in our Pelham um, businesses. And what that means is um, creating some type of a campaign, right? So Clay and I had talked just very, very back in the envelope idea about, okay, what if like Mondays and Tuesdays or Mondays was like a, you know, Mexican Tuesdays was pizza. I'm being obviously very general right now. The point is that we want to make sure that Pelham is actually um, putting its resources into the community so that, so that our businesses that we love so much are there at the end of this crisis. The second avenue for this, um, which is semi-related to that, is that there are people, of course, seniors is where we're focusing, who are food insecure. So what does that mean? It means that we can raise money in the town of Pelham Pelham, and we can actually take those funds and we can use them in the small businesses in Pelham to then have food delivered to these seniors. So I'm going to stop there because there is so much I want to be able to discuss with you. I'm sure you have many questions. I might not have all of your answers, but I promise what I will do is I will have um, detailed notes and by tomorrow we will have answers to your questions if I don't know them already. All right. Thank you. Um... If you want to raise your hand, if you have a question, just raise your hand. The only problem is I have two screens of people. Um, oh, there you go. We will have Frank. Okay, Frank, I unmuted you. You can ask. Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, so I think what's on a, a lot of our minds, or at least on my mind for, for certain is, um, you know, I have to Frank, be maybe, what, yeah, sorry. Maybe you can tell what your business is so everybody knows and so- Absolutely, so, so my name is Frank and I, I own Successful Vision. Um, I have a eyewear shop um, on 106 Fifth Avenue here in Pelham. Um, so I am still, I believe, considered an essential business um, because I produce medical devices um, and obviously people need to be able to see. So I'm under the impression that I will be open tomorrow. Um, this is what my colleagues have, have told me and, and what I believe, but um, the question really is more, what are we going to do during this time? Because at this particular point, I'm open to provide pretty much emergency services for people. Um, I don't think people are going to be flooding my store to buy eyewear, and that's completely understandable. And I'm truly only opening to provide services for people if they're in need. So with that being said, obviously, there's a, a large loss of income that we're all, all suffering. Um, but there's going to need to be rent that's paid to these landlords. Um, and what everybody has spoken about is, all right, well, 90-day eviction, you know, uh, vacations, all right, we're not going to evict anybody. But 
what do we what do we say to the landlords what what is how does this trickle down from the landlord's perspective like if he's not having to pay a mortgage on that building um do has anybody had a conversation with any of the major landlords in town to find out like is there going to be any leniency for us because i know for certain i have about maybe two weeks and and that's all i'm, I'm pretty much going to have there monetarily so yeah. um, you you brought up actually three very good points so number one something i didn't um say and by the way nice to meet you and thank you for participating nice to meet you thank you um so for essential businesses so let's say for example you're not on that list of essential businesses okay you can send it i have the email address the governor's office is asking that businesses that um would like waivers can send an email to the governor's office they will review it um rather quickly um, and then give you an answer so anybody on the call who would like to still stay open and, and is not deemed an essential business um, can still apply for a waiver so that's number one and i'm sorry that i didn't uh, mention that earlier um number two the moratorium is also on mortgages right so it's it basically everything is frozen right there's no like you don't pay your rent the building is not paying the mortgage everything is frozen and so that is by executive order by the state of new york what the legislature is trying to do is to codify it into law so that it is not challenged to your point um, by the banks and by the lending institutions um, and that is a work in progress but right now the law um, from the executive order is that mortgages um, and rents are frozen for 90 days. I think that you are. Um, sorry, hold on, Frank. Okay, you're back. Oh, no, I did math. I'm sorry. Uh, Frank, I got to find you. I'm sorry. Oh, here. Yeah. There you go. Sorry, Frank. <laughs> no, that's all right. Thank right you. So, so basically, what you're saying is it, I'm not going to, if I can't make this month's, uh, you know, rent then I, I don't have to worry right now. I, I'm not in a position where, where the landlord could, could come down and say, hey, listen, you know, uh, I'm going to hit you with these late fees or this is what's going to happen. I mean, so it's frozen across the board. Is that what we're saying? It's frozen across the board. So that means that you can't have fees. There's no interest that's tacked on. It's not permitted. And if any, and so here's the thing, right? Simply because it's the law does not mean that people follow the law, right? We, we see landlords who do all kinds of nefarious things, especially when the law has changed. So if you see or find anybody on this call that your landlord or anybody is um, that you are, you know, paying your rent to or your or your mortgage to, if you're in that situation, um, is giving you a hard time. You please let me know because we will handle it and we will make sure um, that they are informed of the law first and foremost, and then um, that they're held accountable. Full full stop. Fantastic. That, um, Thank you, Tyler. I know that there's a lawyer on named Matt Marin. He's uh, reached out to me, offering um, support or getting some of his lawyer friends together to kind of create a. Um, Right. a place for the uh, businesses to go to and kind of bounce ideas off of. So do you think that that would be helpful? And Matt's unmuted right now too. So, um. yeah, Senator, I know listen, you're, you're, you're an attorney at law as well, so you probably can understand this. These businesses are going to need support. And to what Frank had said before about dealings with his landlord, if he's got to go out and take out loans, you know, a lot of these folks are going to need legal guidance with this. Can we as attorneys potentially help these businesses as part of pro bono efforts, especially given the catastrophic effects that the COVID-19 um, situation has had to this region and the country as a whole. Is that something that would be potentially feasible that we can do and use our skills and efforts to help these folks because they're going to need it. And I think it would kind of help them, especially with this fact is that the, that the evictions are going to be on hold for three months, but then they're going to have to start dealing with the landlords and potentially fighting off court cases after that period's done. And so, you know, it's, it's going to start up again at some point. I think that's a great idea, Matt. And I would say yes to that. Um, I think it's an, an actually an excellent um, way to exercise the um, non-voluntary 50 hour, <laughs> 50 hours at the bar um, asks that lawyers do. I think, I think it's actually a really excellent idea. And to your point, um, it, it could also extend beyond that because some of these applications might be confusing for some folks, right? Between the um, debt suspension application and the grant um, application, as well as the loan application, it could be complicated. So it, a lawyer uh, set, a lawyer set of eyes could also be really helpful. I also want to just make one note as well, because um, we're really cognizant of this um, in the legislature. 
the payroll tax and the sales tax deadlines. Um, these are things that we have requested um, not only be pushed out, um, but really be considered um, uh, to be removed as burdens. And so there's a TBD on that. Now I know the sales tax deadline was the 21st, I believe. Um, it was that the 20th, it was Friday. 20th, 20th, okay. Um, but the payroll tax um, is due at the, on the 30th, at the end of the month or the 30th. Right. Yes, 30th. So we're working on that now. It's, it's a work in progress. Um, but if anybody is feeling um, a particular burden as a result of any of those two things, please also let me know um, so that I can do what I can to, to please help you. But Matt, to your point, I think it's an excellent idea. Getting a group of lawyers um, in town to do that could be a really amazing way to provide resources for the small businesses in Pelham. Okay, great. Um, uh, Ms. Castellan, I think, has a question. Ann? Uh, right. Uh, actually, it's, it's Dr. Castellan. I'm an orthodontist but, uh, in Pelham. Um, I just want to know if um, on insurance payments, medical insurance payments, is there any way the, um, the state could accelerate uh, uh, medical insurance payments? So are you talking about private insurance? Right. Or not, not Medicaid? Right. Um, Currently, there is discussions with DFS to do two things. So it, there hasn't been a discussion as to what you're specifically saying, which is to ask if the insurance companies pay doctors um, for the services that already have been rendered. Um, but what has been asked is actually that, that policies not be canceled because a lot of um, insurance policy holders are not able to meet their insurance policy payments. And so now there's on that side of the equation, um, an issue with regards to insurance companies there. Um, I will ask that question uh, tomorrow on the governor's call. Um, but just to be specifically clear, the, the request is can insurance companies accelerate the payment to, or can DFS require that insurance companies accelerate the payment to medical providers at the time? It's, oh. it's, it's, it's uh, great. Uh, Dr. My Dr. office Dr. manager here. Dr. Dr. Koswan's husband. Medical and dental professionals receive insurance reimbursement from insurance companies all the time. Yes. Insurance companies are state regulated. What we're asking for is those, is those payments be accelerated. Not that they pay us for services that are not going to be rendered. Sure. Rendered the service is just bridging the cash flow crunch. I got it. For previous, yes, I got that for previous services. Okay. I will ask that all question. Right, great. Uh, we have a, a question from Amanda from uh, Tig and Peach. For some reason, I can't. Uh, oh, there. Hi. Hey, you too. Hey, yeah, yeah. I, I have a couple of questions. Just one, is there an official written order to freeze mortgages and rents at this time? Um, we have our rent bill, so yes. Um, and where could I find that? I will, I will send, I will put together an email at the end of this and Clay will send it to everybody and, and we will make sure that everyone gets that information. So for the executive order for the freezing of rents. Okay. And then the second question is Emily and I, um, at this time, have no way to generate income. Um, we're getting really nervous, honestly. Yes. Um, we, you know, our entire business is centered around community and gathering. Um, so obviously, people aren't coming in buying memberships. We've frozen all memberships, and uh, luckily, a few people opted in to continuing to help us but that doesn't cover a fraction of what our expenses will be so um, at the beginning of last week we were still trying to sell classes obviously no one's buying classes by the end of the week because of all the information that's come to light so um, I guess what are our options well you know so here's what I'm seeing at least in the spaces kind of that you're the space that you work in um, which to your point is it's, it is a um, a community oriented space. So if it's possible, okay, for you to offer the same services that you would generally offer in person um, digitally. So for example, right, a lot of kids are learning remotely now, or they're, I mean, there's no after school programs to my knowledge that are able to be even offered by the schools. The schools are even having a hard time um, offering the curriculum digitally right now. So that's a challenge, but there could be a way um, number one, to do that. That's just a creative entrepreneurial type of thing that just came to my mind. And I don't know if that's possible, but you could do it literally from your kitchen. You could do it from wherever you are, right? And everyone can just log in and they can pay a specific fee for that, that certain class. Um, 
if you're talking more about like, how do we make sure that we continue to allow for the cash flow to allow us to exist? Um, I think looking into the two examples of what I said, so the, the grants or the loans or accessing what the Westchester Business Council is offering um, as help could be a way to begin. And if you need help to look through what you feel like is most um, appropriate for your business, um, perhaps either myself or Matt, if he's willing, I don't want to obviously volunteer him without him saying that he wants to do it, um, could offer some help or services because here's the thing, there isn't really one answer to all of this. And the revenue piece of this is very, it, it's the ch most challenging part to this entire process because as people are not spending money, because people are not either making money or people are losing their jobs, it's becoming increasingly more difficult, which is why the loan and grant programs are being offered. Um, but those, those two things or those three things might not even work for you either. So we can have a conversation, a longer conversation, um, either tomorrow or the next day, and just kind of talk through a little bit more of the details and of what's available so that you don't feel like you're rushed here and that you're not you know, left in the lurch after we close the Zoom, but that's the whole point. And so that now I know this is something you care about. I can think a little bit more about what's possible and we can try to be helpful. Yeah, Emily and I would love that. I think maybe we'll speak offline. Um, in a little more detail. And, and if I could just talk a little bit um, as well, uh, Amy Cole and Todd Cross and I have been talking about, now that we have this Zoom program, uh, we were talking today about a lot of, um, we want to do every other day or um, as much as possible to get resources in the community about mental health right now, because I know we're all stressed uh, for businesses and uh, just kind of ideas. I know that uh, I, I think Thrive's on here. Thrive's been doing a really good job with their social media, even though they can't be open. You know, just kind of throw ideas out and what's working for people and what's not working for people. So, um, so know that um, the chamber is going to be here doing a lot of uh, different things and reaching out to people in the community who can help uh, support us, not just financially, but also just with ideas and marketing and stuff like that. Um, so it's a great idea. Also, to one, if I if I may, um, one thing that I just want to say that I've noticed a little bit, which is um, I think a good thing because it's an opportunity. And and um, Amanda, this might not apply to you, but you know, a lot of businesses are not really used to having an app or don't really do things online or they're just used to you know, the, the, right. the traffic coming in and out. And so this is also an opportunity for anyone on this call or for anyone that we know, for businesses, especially for our, our food businesses who don't have uh, either a Seamless or a Grubhub or their own app to help them to learn how to just quickly get on so that people can still order, they can still be accessed um, and I know that could be challenging for some. So just another another idea um, to keep in the back of our minds at this time. I noticed that there's a couple of nonprofit organizations on the line too. I'm assuming everything we're talking about right now applies to them as well. I know they have different needs and um, whatnot, but yes, um, a lot there's there is a, a lot of what we just discussed applies to not for profits as well. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I have a question from. Kate Kerrigan. Kate, you're unmuted. Um, I missed this at the very beginning, but is the executive order to freeze commercial landlords' mortgage payments as well as commercial rents and residential mortgage payments and residential rents? The 90-day freeze on commercial and residential mortgages. And then there is a rent moratorium that is, that is separate and distinct from that. Okay, so the rent moratorium is for commercial rent? So they, so they, so they're okay. So the ninety-day freeze is for commercial and residential mortgages, and right. then there is also a ninety-day freeze on rent, and I believe it is for both. But one second, I'm just looking here. Give me a second. Right. Yes, it's yes, yes. Well, so so this is this is how it this is how it broadly applies. It's a 90-day moratorium on evictions for residential and commercial tenants. So that's how that specific piece applies. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, we have a question about uh, monthly real estate taxes. Um, I just unmuted AVF. Who is AVF? Are you still there? Oh, they said, "What about monthly real estate taxes?" Do we answer that? No, we didn't. That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Okay. 
But, but, hold, but hold on a second. So here's the thing. The federal tax deadline has been extended to July 15th, which sounds good in theory, but the way that it's going to affect us. So there's two problems here. The one problem is that the state deadline has not been extended. So we have to be cognizant of that, which is a little bit confusing and probably will confuse a lot of people. But also kicking out this, the federal deadline to July 15th means that it's going to have a cash shortfall for the state of New York, which I don't know that we are necessarily fully prepared for. Now, I want to say that we're not fully prepared for it simply also because um, April 1st is the state budget deadline. That's what we're working on as we speak. Um, and so we have to kind of shuffle pieces to figure out how to make that work while also dealing with the deficit, while also dealing with um, all of the other previous things that we're demanding on our um, our state Great. revenue fund. So just, that's um, just a side piece. I, sorry, I, I will, noticed. I will, I will write that down. I noticed that the mayor is here, and I wanted him to have a chance to talk. We're gonna wind this up in about five or uh, ten minutes. Um, maybe we'll just see how much more. But let's uh, wind it up. A chance you're unmuted. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Hey guys. Um, I just wanted to pick up on that one. Uh, that is something that is is uh, has started coming into the conversations with the county. Um, we don't, at the local level or even at the county level, I, I believe, have the ability um, to sort of um, allow tax payments to not happen when they happen. Um, there may be some ways that we can um, get rid of penalties for late payments. Um, so that's, that's a conversation that I'm, I'm guessing we'll be able to resolve in the next week. Uh, but the, the ultimate uh, issue that we are facing at the local level, at the county level, and frankly, even at the state level, is that um, all of the services that are that are now being ramped up um, are being paid for by the local level, by the county level, by the state level. Um, so this is one of those things that um, we don't have the ability to print money. Um, and so, frankly, this is where I'm hoping that there's going to be some sort of federal action. Um, to just infuse states with the kinds of with the kind of money that will allow us to ramp up these services um, without, frankly, running out of money. Um, right. It's it's a really big concern for everybody at every level. Yeah, that's exactly Absolutely. right. And just to be clear on the tax deadline, um, I stand corrected. So the deadline for the state and federal is now July fifteenth, and New York State did that today. And that's for state um, tax returns. So just know that. So and that, but to, but to the mayor's point here, this is this is part of the catch twenty two because we obviously don't want to burden anybody um, and require companies as well as individuals to pay taxes or to be or to be um, penalized for that. At the same time, these are the literal dollars that are protecting us at the moment: um, fire, police, all the emergency services. Um, and so it's it's a challenging conundrum that we are working through. Okay. I don't think anybody else, oh, I don't think anybody else has a question. I guess Dr. Kaswan does, but um, some of you are playing uh, with your hair and stretching, so I don't know if it's a question or, or, or just a stretch. <laughs> um, so I'll leave, uh, let's get um, Dr. Kaswan uh, a question and then we'll wrap <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just wanted to know um, what your email address was. Um, I'm not on, uh, I'm presently not getting your newsletter, so. Um, oh, it's it's on the chat below. We'll send it out to you, and okay. Oh, okay, great. Right, yes, thanks. and I want to make sure everyone who wants it is getting on the list. Of course, we have. Um, it's actually probably I the largest um, effort that my team is working on right now. It's it is a lot of information, and and if you get the email when you get the email, what you will see is not only will you get today's email, but you will be able to scroll backwards in time all the way to the first day um, when this entire issue started to see the progression of how things have changed, what's new, um, and how to be able to kind of navigate the spaces um, that apply to you. Um, I got a message that said, Dominic Ragno is asking if landscapers can now work based on recent order. Okay. Are, so, are landscapers? What recent order is he referring to? Because here's what I know about landscapers from today's call with the governor's office. Um, this has been a question that has literally blown up. Um, I think the question, <laughs> the question board, everybody's asking about landscapers everywhere. Um, landscapers are not essential service uh, workers unless they are dealing with pest control. 
that was the guidance that we received. If you received different guidance, please tell me now so I can um, take that back to where it needs to go and either tell them you know, what people are hearing or make sure that it's very clear to everyone because that is what we were told today. Okay. We were, uh, we were then told something slightly different on the county call and then everybody uh, noted that on the state call there was something different. So right. I have a feeling that there's going to be more clarity coming. Yeah. Right. I think Frank has a question and then uh, Ms. Kravitz, do you have a question or? Okay, just checking. And then Frank, we'll close it with Frank's question and then a final talk. So what do you got, Frank? Okay, so um, once again, just to clarify, because we spoke earlier about the 90-day um, the eviction, um, but then we spoke about rent. So, so when you re-clarified, it seemed like you re-clarified that it was just 90 days for eviction, and it's not involving actual commercial rent. So, so here, let me, let me do the two different layers to be crystal clear. Okay, ready? Okay. So, um, there is a 90 day freeze on commercial and residential mortgages. Freeze. There is a 90 day moratorium on evictions for residential and commercial tenants. So if you parse that through, what it means is that, so you as the commercial renter to the commercial landlord, the commercial landlord does not have to pay for 90 days, his commercial mortgage. You as the commercial tenant will not be evicted. So it's essentially what it means is it, it is essentially a freeze. The reason why we as a legislature are trying to codify it is because to your point that you that you astutely picked up, it's not very- It's not clear. Written. It's, not, it, it's, it's not written in the way that would make it very clear for someone to say, oh, right, well, I'm a commercial tenant, therefore I don't have to pay them my rent. Because by telling someone that they're not going to be evicted is not the same thing as telling someone that they don't have to pay their rent. So I fully appreciate that understanding Correct. that distinction. Um, but that is the that is the EO language, the executive order language, and we are attempting right now to codify it into law. I'm a co-sponsor on Senator Giannaris's bill, um, and we're hoping to do that in the next week or so. Um, but in the if you do not pay your rent, you will not be evicted. Okay. <laughs> that's, that is, that is, that's that is what it means. I know it's it's not it's not. It doesn't seem like it protects the person in the end when this all clears up, you know. And that's what what I'm worried about because I mean that's all well and good for now to say okay, well, you know, if you don't pay it, you're not going to be evicted. But what happens when this is all done and they say, well, we just said we weren't going to evict you. We didn't say you didn't have to pay your rent. Well, and that's and that's actually correct, right? So the way that the governor has proposed it in his executive order is that those three months where you were not evicted or you didn't have to pay your mortgage payments or your rent payments would get tacked on to the end of your lease. Now, I find that, as well as a lot of my colleagues find that, to be very burdensome. Um, and so what we are really trying to do is have a cancel it, just cancel it, like do not require it, and then provide state funds to be able to cover that because it's going to provide, it, it could actually be the difference between you survive this pandemic and then you're at the end of this lease and you realize I can't pay that, right? And then it, it, it's, you don't, we don't want to be requiring or asking businesses to take out loans simply to do that. It's, it is so, um, it's so complicated because each case is so different. However, I hear you and, and I am in full agreement with you and I, I get it and that is what we're fighting for. So in the codification of it, at least a majority of us are really asking for that to be the law. Thank when you're saying you have to pay it at the end, would it be an additional three months on whatever current lease you have or is it a lump sum or I guess nobody really knows? No, well, it would, be, it would be at the end of the, of the specific lease which is not smart, right? So like, let's say you have a one year term and you didn't pay for three months and then your term is up at the end and then those three months payment would be due then, which doesn't make any sense. And Clay, you and I had this conversation yeah. about, it would be smarter to say, you know what, we're gonna kick your lease out three more months um, and you're gonna have three more months and you're just gonna pay for that then. Right, yeah, that would be nice. Yep. That would definitely be nice. Um, all right, great. Well, we've, uh, you know, Thank you so much for uh, spending some time with us tonight. You're very I think welcome. That um, you know, when I got your call, and I wanted everybody else to know that you know, Senator Biaggi is really, really, really behind Pelham and really, really behind businesses, and is really, really available too. So um, she has Marianne Joyce, who's um, I'll unmute Marianne Joyce, who's also lives in Pelham. You're not muted, Marianne Joyce, and she's Hello. a really good resource to reach out to. 
and she can put you on all these lists and whatnot. And um, she's kind of uh, Alessandra's person on the ground in Pelham. So uh, we'll get a quicker answer out of her. Um, so, and uh, also more Curtin, I know a lot of you know. Uh, she's also a great resource to reach out to. Um, and like I said, if you guys have any ideas, now we have this Zoom, we can have 100 people in. So we could easily have a lot of more conversations if anybody feels the need and uh, or has any suggestions. So um, thank you everybody for showing up. Thank you, Alessandra, for being there for us and supporting us. Thank and, you. Um, thank you for holding and this is recorded so you can go back. I missed the first five minutes, but sorry. But um, you can go back uh, starting tomorrow. I'll post it on social media for anybody. Uh, to listen to. And uh, thank you, Mayor Mullen, for joining us too. And um, thank you, everybody, for. Let me, let me just say one more thing. Um, rest assured, everyone, that I, myself, Clay, Chance, uh, my entire team, we are on the phone or texting each other constantly as things come up, as things are changing. There isn't like a, oh, I'll talk to you on a Friday and let you know what happened maybe on Tuesday. It's constantly, um, the communication is a constant flow. So, questions that you have are very important to be asked in real time. Do not feel like you're burdening us. You're not. The entire world has a thousand questions. I have a lot of questions. Every day I'm sending the governor's office at least 15 questions from people who are asking me things like, can my landscaper come? Am I able to go to the grocery store? Can I go to you know my, my eyeglass store? Things like that are really, they're real questions. This is, we are dealing with a lot of this stuff in real time. There is no playbook for this. I'm building this plane like while we are flying it. So. We're gonna figure it out together and your questions are an important way to get us clarity because not only does it help Pelham or this district, it actually is a way for all the other legislators across the state to hear the questions and then to take it back to their districts too. So please continue to ask questions. And for those of you who I said I would talk to you offline, let's make time to do that. I'm here for you, my team is here for you. And thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Stay safe, everybody. And, um, thank you, we'll talk soon. Thanks guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.